What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Rockets Hits and Heartbreaks. Well, let's kind of give you a little bit of an update. Uh, the Rockets have been red hot lately, as in last week, uh, hitting multiple pick fives on Thursday and Friday at Keeneland. We're hitting them at Oakland, hitting them at Aqueduct. It's been crazy. But I don't really want to talk about last week. I want to talk about this week. I want to do a special Rockets Hits and Heartbreaks centered entirely around the Kentucky Derby and how to play the Kentucky Derby from a multi-race standpoint. And I think this is interesting because you can preview a race, and guess what? There will be a preview of the Kentucky Derby out on our website soon. But really, handicapping a race for multi-races versus handicapping a race for exactas, trifectas, superfectas, it's completely different. There's horses that I'm dying to use in the exact and super that I'm probably not going to use in a pick four or a pick five. So I thought it would be very interesting to kind of get my first thoughts on how to look at this thing from a multi-race standpoint. I've got the entries up on the screen now. I would pull up past performances, but I really don't think we are, are allowed to do that. Probably a big no-no. But uh, I will pull up the entries. We'll talk about it. Um, and I'll kind of talk about some things that maybe I see on the past performances. I'm just going to go through them one by one kind of yay or nay am I going to think about using this horse uh, on a multi-race ticket? I want to be very clear about one thing. This is not the final word, right? This is me. This isn't my first look at this, but this is me sitting here on a Sunday afternoon playing. This is kind of what I plan to do. And then I will adjust and tinker and then post, obviously, the, the, the final Rockets on Friday morning for Saturday. And you'll see when you buy them if uh, I kind of stuck to the plan or maybe change up a little bit. So, Let's go through it. Door knock at the at number one. I don't really have a lot of interest in him from a multi-race standpoint. Number two, Sierra Leone. I am so back and forth on if this is a good draw or a bad draw. I I yeah, even though I've said for like three weeks, it probably doesn't matter where he draws. Gosh, I I think it would have been better to have him a little bit further outside, maybe like six, seven, eight. I don't think it's the worst though. So Sierra Leone would certainly be one. I would send a check mark of my first run through this. Sierra Leone's one I'm thinking about. Mystic Dan is another one. If it rains, I'm going to throw that horse on a ticket. If not, I don't have a lot of interest. Here's a hot button one. This will be one that, you know, I think people might not agree with. I'm not playing number four catching freedom as of right now in a multi-race ticket. I think he's more of a hit the board type. Um, I just, I, I re watch his replays and, even the Louisiana Derby, which I thought was his best race, I don't think it was quite as impressive as Sierra Leone, a horse that well, obviously Sierra Leone's also beat him in the Risen Star. I don't think Catching Freedom really drew well either. If the two Sierra Leone didn't draw well, but it's like, yeah, maybe he can kind of overcome it. He's going to drop to the last anyway. Catching Freedom was one I thought if he drew a good post, he broke well. Maybe he could not sit like close or anything, but maybe sit more mid-pack. With this situation, if he just breaks a half step slow or something, he could get shuffled back further. So he's probably not going to be on my multi-race ticket. Catalytic, no. Just steal. A horse I like underneath, but as far as multi-races, no, probably not. Honor Marie, probably just underneath. Probably not going to be on my ticket either. Now let's get to these two, though. The eight and the nine, uh, just a touch in Encino. I'll put check marks to come back around. They make the first cut here of what I'm trying to do. So uh, Sierra Leone made the made the cut, just a touch in Encino going to make the cut. These are two horses that I have been on the fence about as far as actually winning the race. Um, I think they're both good. I think they both can hit the board. I was on the fence about winning the race. You go back, you watch the replays, you look at where they've drawn it's pretty perfect for these two horses. I think they kind of won the draw. So that's where the draw can sometimes make a little bit of difference. Maybe it doesn't knock you off of like your favorite horse, but at times it can kind of knock you or, or put you on a horse that you were on the fence about or take you off a horse that you might be on the fence about. So the eight and nine, they kind of, uh, I'm going to go back to them my second time through here, just to touch in Encino. They're probably going to be on tickets for me. To password. No, um, just no interest. Forever Young, I thought he drew very well. He'll make my pass, like first time through pass um, for multi-race ticket. I, I thought he drew pretty well. Um, I'm still not in love with him, but I, I do think the post is pretty good. And, you know, I, I think he can work out a trip from there. So he he makes first pass. No interest in Track Phantom in, in any way or West Saratoga. No offense to the owners and trainers of West Saratoga. I mean, this is a great story. If I lose, I hope it's him that beats me. But 
you know, from a handicapping standpoint, I just couldn't get there as far as using him on a multi-race ticket. Same with endlessly, just, you know, I've been back and forth, but I just kind of think they really wanted to, or the trainer at least really wanted to run him on the turf. So I, I, I just, at the end of the day, I don't think he's quite going to be good enough on the dirt. No interest in domestic product. Grand Mo the first get to fierceness. He's another one check mark for me. Perfect draw for him. I know a lot of people are going to go, Whoa, he just said that's a perfect draw. Nobody's ever won from 17. How could he say that? L clearly it's not a good draw, draw for everybody, but for this horse, this specific horse, I really don't mind it. Because my biggest worry is, you go back and watch all his replays. The only consistent thing I can see about both of his terrible efforts, he was he was kind of jostled around early, kind of knocked around early, and thrown off of his game. So to me, you draw outside, you still could get you still could get bottled up. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, but the chances are a little less likely. He should be able to outbreak the 16 Grand Mo the first and the 18 Stronghold. And if he does, boom, he's going to be right there. He's going to be in the clear. Uh, he may lose a little bit of ground on that first turn. I mean, there's probably not a may. He probably is going to. But all that speed, so he's inside. And look, if they're out there flying, he can just kind of stock the pace and sit that three, four wide trip. And if for whatever reason, some horses kind of get shuffled back and don't go, Johnny V is going to be able to see it and just take him right to the front. I, I think for this specific course, it's a good post. Honestly, if he would have drawn like one through five, I probably would have thrown him out six through 10. I probably would have thought about throwing him out. But I think since he drew, drew outside, guys, I, I really just believe he's the type of horse. If you keep him clean, you keep him from, from getting knocked around. I think he's a must play. So I love the outside draw for him. The 18 strongholds, another one. And this is why I did the video of like versus an exacto play, a trifecta play versus multi-race. I don't think stronghold can win the race. I would lump resilience in that as well. 18 and 19 stronghold resilience. I think they can, you know, exacto wise, a trifecta wise, maybe their horses to throw in underneath. I don't think you're going to play them uh, on the, uh, on the multi races. The 20 is society man. And I don't have much interest in any, any way, shape or form there. The two also eligibles down here at the very, very bottom. We better cover them. They drew this race a week early. I could see a scratch happening in one of these or two of these getting in. Epic ride, maybe underneath at a monster number, but for multi-race purposes, I, I just can't get there. Mugatu, uh, again, maybe underneath for kind of just that weird horse to get third, but again, for multi-race purposes, it, it's it's just not for me this year. So uh, as I say that, again, this is just multi-race horses that I'm considering using. I do have the two uh, Sierra Leone, the eight just to touch, the nine Encino, and the 17 fierceness. I really believe that's really all you need to use. Um, that's most likely, again, this is Sunday afternoon. We might get scratches that affect the pace, this, that, and the other. Something may happen where, where you worry a little more about situations like this. But as of right now, they seem like the ones that stick out to me as far as win contenders. So uh, like I said, two Sierra Leone, eight just to touch, nine Encino, 17 Fierceness. That's the four horses I'm considering for multi-race. Um, and look, I, I I think if this is your mix of horses you're going to play, you can play all four on a ticket and still have a positive expected value because uh, you do have the two you know shortest prices, but you got two longer prices in there with them. If you want to narrow it down, I think that's where it gets a little bit tough. Um, but I think those are the four horses that will end up on my ticket, at least uh, right here as of Sunday. So uh, I just want to do a little something different, do a little bit more of a handicapping video versus a, a here's a, the, the pick five we want at Keeneland and here's why, why it happened. I will say this, uh, the, the rock has been really, really hot the last week. Um, I personally kind of made some adjustments, uh, to, to, uh, the handicapping style of do a little bit more of this kind of a uh, not system. It's not a systematic thing at all, but a little bit more of this kind of approach to it versus, okay, who's the top, who's the four horses you like the best type of thing. So uh, I think that's really been a big difference uh, in this. And I, I, I think you've kind of seen the results of that um, as, as we've gone through the week, of course, it's Sunday right now, they're running races right now. Who knows what Sunday is going to bring for the Rockets. Hopefully you have some more hits and maybe we can talk about those another day. So that's what I'm looking at for the Kentucky Derby. As far as multi-race plays, um, 
like I said, not final decisions. We'll make those a little bit later. You can check back, get the Rockets, and fi- and see that uh, final result. All right, guys, thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll come back at you next week to kind of see how we did in Kentucky Derby 150. <laughs>